Hi guys, it's me Jennifer with HealthyCraftyMom.com and today we are going to talk about why I let my kids celebrate Halloween. So I got this question, so grab your warm drink and let's go ahead and get started. So I got this question from a family member. He's like, well, you're a Christian. Like, why do you let your kids celebrate Halloween? Like, isn't that the devil's holiday? And I was like, yeah, but Christmas was a devil's holiday at one time too. It's also a pagan holiday. So if you're gonna let your kids celebrate Christmas, why don't you let them celebrate Halloween? And so um, I realized that so many people don't actually know where the history of Halloween comes from and what it's celebrated. And so this is just a fun video to talk about where Halloween comes from and my personal beliefs and why I think it's okay to let my kids celebrate Halloween. So um, yeah, with all that being said, let's, we're already started. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, so I am I part Irish uh, and I also grew up Catholic and those two things are going to kind of correspond into the whole beliefs thing at the end and why I think it's okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the Celtic holiday. It was a pagan holiday called Samhain and Samhain is, um, was a harvest festival, is a harvest festival and, um, it started out, you know, they would like do the last harvest and all of that, and then they would have a feast before winter. Well, they also believed that the realm between worlds, like the spirit world and the human world, is thinning. And because they believed that this veil was, veil was thinning, they needed to um, have a bonfire to scare away the goblins and fairies. Goblins and fairies are pretty much what Christians consider demons. Um, they were believed to be negative spirits that um, would ruin their festivals. Um, after a certain amount of time, they realized that, you know, having this big bonfire using a wheel, it was they had to have it far away from their homes. So these fairies and goblins could go get into their homes. So eventually the bonfire became like what is now jack-o'-lanterns. Like it went through a process and eventually became the jack-o'-lantern that we use in front of our homes today. And Christians even use this after uh, Christianity hit um, Ireland because they also believe the same thing, that the veil is thinner between the spirit world and the human world that we live in, and um, or at least as Catholics. Um, we, we have several holidays around the same time. Um, so that, so we still use jack lanterns to do the same thing. And so I don't see how it, it's bad if we're scaring off like demons and evil spirits, right? So that, that's my first thing right there is that... The holiday might be not have started out not Christian, but it's also turned Christian because it's now called All Hall Hallows Eve or Halloween, um, and it's the start to a lot of holidays. Which I'm getting off track. I didn't even finish about sewing. So it started with the bonfires slash jack o' lanterns, and then they had a feast. We have a feast Thanksgiving. Um, it's just not all connected at one time. It's spread out nowadays. So it was bonfire, feast, and during this feast, they believe that the ancestor, their ancestors would come and visit. And because the ancestors were visiting, the parents would talk about what happened throughout the year and, or adults, whatever. So adults would talk about, oh, this is how the year's going, like catching up the ancestors. They just talk about like, so it was kind of like a yearly catch up. And then the kids would play all these games that mostly at the time, you know, girls were really obsessed with who they were gonna marry, who's gonna marry first, 
like all of that stuff. So it kind of revolved around that. And most of the games used apples. Uh, the biggest one, one that's still popular today is bobbing for apples. Um, so those are all things that we still celebrate and we still do just for fun. Um, but yeah, that's what I've learned about the sewing festival. And so then being Catholic, we kind of do that. Like we have Halloween and that's, you know, we have the jack-o'-lanterns where the whole point of Halloween was to scare away the demons. And then the next day is all saints day. So we believe, you know, like the saints are here in their clothes and we like, we don't really, uh, Catholics don't really pray to them. I'm not Catholic anymore, but they don't pray to them, but they do ask for them. It, they ask for those people that we think are really close to God to pray for us. Um, I mean, it, we're not praying to them where it's like, it would be like going up to your friend and being like, Hey, look, um, I'm having this problem. Can you pray for me? And then your friend praying to you. So I know a lot of people mistake Catholicism as we believe in all this stuff and we worship people that we don't. Anyways, um, I digress. And then the next day is All Souls Day, which is where your ancestors come to visit. Um, if you're um, from a Hispanic culture, they call it Dia de los Muertos. But yeah, so as you can see, the two festivals really mix together. And that is why my kids are going to be allowed to celebrate Halloween. All right. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.